Welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. Uh, we got a good one for you today, as you can see. Joseph Diaz and Jesus Perez. I am remote in New York, working uh, not in Texas. I'm in New York for the Oshaki Force to file. I'll be covering that as media. But I wanted to bring you this uh, show. It's Joseph Diaz and uh, Jesus Perez. Um, I've gotten a lot of requests for this fight, and I typically don't like to do Joey, Jojo Diaz fight because it's just too unpredictable with Jojo. Uh, you don't know where Jojo's going to show up. And Jojo's a friend of mine. I, I've met him a bunch of times. I like him a lot. Um, but that being said, he's just really unpredictable. Um, you, you don't know if he's going to be drunk, if he's going to be overweight, if he's going to be in tip-top shape and sharp. I, I, I think his performance over uh, Tevin Farmer, his win there, was the performance of 2020. It was an amazing performance. Uh, he was not going to be denied. It was really, really top notch. Uh, but then he goes in and, and like whack him off. He he just like no shows it. And it. He's a frustrating guy. But before we get into all that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow three boxing, three boxing blog at all forms of social media. Uh, the boxing book that comes at you for every single major fight. Show you how to uh, bring down the house and consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, beat the odds, bring down the house. Uh, there's always a bull market somewhere, but I don't gamble. But if you guys do, uh, you guys do bet on sports, bet on boxing, uh, I'm going to show you how to consistently make an income betting on, on sports boxing. We were 4-0 last week. Uh, we're going to do it again this week. Um, well, join my Patreon. Uh, if you join my Patreon, you get the Lock of the Week. I just put out a great Lock of the Week. Just put one out today. Uh, if you join the Patreon uh, before tomorrow, uh, you'll get that. It's just $5 a month. You get the Lock of the Week. You can ask me anything. get a lot of requests. You get a free T-shirt. You get a ton of good perks, a ton of awesome perks. Uh, but please like, share. Uh, please subscribe to the Patreon. Also follow my other channel, Texas Boxing. See, I'm going to be uploading a lot of content uh, from the way in and, and from the fight night, uh, from the Oshaki Force, Abraham Nova fight, from the Garden. So check that out. Uh, I've totally lost my train of thought here. All right, let's get let, let's get into it. Jojo Diaz, Jesus Perez. Jesus Perez is he's a fun fighter, so it's going to be a fun fight. But he's just he's just a, an opponent level guy. He, he's a, a B side. There's that's all there is to it. I'm not trying to disrespect the guy. I'm I'm not trying to throw any shade on him. He's just he is what he is, and he's an opponent. He's tough as hell. He went the distance with Alexis Rocha in a fight where he was embarrassingly undersized. So I give him full credit for taking the fight. But the reality is he's not at that level. He's fun, and he can make it competitive. But he's an opponent-level guy. A tough, aggressive, front-foot fighter will fight the entire fight in a phone booth, and he may do that. He may just do that. Let me get this pulled up here. This is to give you some of that. He lost to Brian Norman, lost basically every round. He lost to Alexis Rocha, got dominated. He lost to Daniel uh, Danielito Zaria, lost every round. Lost to Carlos Diaz. He's, I mean, it's it, 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 Ruslan Mediev. Lost every round, almost. He's not going to beat Jojo Diaz. I think he can make it competitive to a point. I think the odds are a little wide, which is why I didn't really want to touch this, but he kept getting requests for it. The guy's got a good chin. He throws hard. He's flat-footed. He crosses his feet. He comes in wide open. He's good on the inside. He's got good skills on the inside, offensively speaking, but he leaves himself so wide open. He throws good combinations, but he leaves himself so wide open to be tagged. He's just – he's really – He's not a terrible fighter, and he can beat guys, but at, at, at this level, no, he's going to lose. He's just, I, I mean, I, I, I just can't, he's just not at a world-class level, and, and Jojo Diaz is. He's got a really bad habit of resetting, too. You'll, you'll notice this, right? Like, if, 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 if you jab at him or you, in Jojo Diaz's case, throw a straight left, he's got to reset. He's got to reset. So, at a distance. So he can't really punch in between your punches. He's got to reset, and he's got to reset. And it's just, it's not good. Jojo Diaz is a master of punching in between your punches. Jojo Diaz is super accurate, lands lands really clean on, on, in exchanges. 
He doesn't waste a bunch of energy. Jojo Diaz, I've always thought, is criminally underrated. Like, you'll watch the Fortuna fight, and you watch the Tevin Farmer fight, and, and the Gary Russell Jr. fight. He fights well against boxers. He fights well against aggressive guys. He's got a really high ring IQ. He cuts off the ring really well. He, like I said, he doesn't waste energy. He's not an easy guy to counter. He's defensively responsible. He's, he's got, you know, not quick feet, but good feet. He's not there. He's not he doesn't square up with you a lot. He's really, really good on the inside. Like I said, he can throw every single punch in a phone booth, in the mid-range, up tight. He can throw everything. He doesn't make a lot of rookie mistakes. He's just he's clean. And I think his skills are highly, highly underrated. He blocks a lot of shots. You know, what he can do is he does shell up at times a little bit. It's not a major problem, but it is something I, I, I picked up on. He's got a tight height guard. He's got the, he's got the good southpaw jab. Really good body puncher. I think he's a bit shot. I think he's a little bit past his prime. But Jojo Diaz is 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 a is a good fighter. He's not just a forward come forward pressure. Remember, this guy was an Olympian. He's got really good skills. He can box a little bit. You know, he, he's not lightning quick. But he's got a ton of skills. And then his power is not great, but it's not horrible. He he rocked Fortuna. He's he's not he, he gave Devin Haney problems, right? Like he gave Gary Russell problems. He beat Tevin Farmer, which is his signature win. <clears throat> he's got wins over Fortuna. He's got a, a a bunch of quality wins. And I I think this fight is competitive, but I just think Jojo Diaz, assuming he's in shape and, and assuming he's sharp and on top of that, Golden Boy really wants to make the fight at 135 with him and Kid Austin with Floyd Schofield. They really want to make that fight. So, if anything, if this fight is close, it's going to go to JoJo. I mean, <clears throat> JoJo's their guy, and uh, Badez is their Rinser, he's their opponent. He's, he's their guy that is there to lose. So, keep that in mind. Um I think the fight will be fairly competitive. I say it's like 7-3 Jojo Diaz, something like that. Is it – all right, let – oh, hang on one second. Let me pull up the odds here. All right, got it, guys. Um, sorry about that. Why? Hang on one second. Let me try this again. I apologize. I apologize. Here it is. Sorry for that. That was embarrassing, but let's take – can you guys see this? Yeah, you can see this. Sorry about that. I was trying to get this pulled up. All right, so this is what we're looking at here. Jojo Diaz, minus 750. Make a one times bet on that. Jojo Diaz over eight and a half. I like that. You know, he's just a guy that went the distance. I said with Alexis Rocha. I don't see Jojo stopping him, so I like it over eight and a half. So that's a two hundred dollar bet. That makes it thirty three, thirty three. Pretty good odds. And if you want, you can just do this. So this would be a three hundred dollar bet. And you just hedge it a little bit, and it would make you 54, 
74. Making about $75 on a $300 bet. So it's not bad. Assuming Jojo Diaz is win, I think we all think Jojo Diaz is win. This is really kind of the best way to make money on it. Sorry for that delay. So it would be Jojo Diaz at minus 750. It would be jo- uh, the over eight and a half at minus 500. And then Jojo Diaz at minus 240 to win by decision. Uh, you can just go two times on, on the decision if you want, but just to hedge it a little bit, um, I, I, I would do that. Jojo Diaz, Jojo Diaz uh, by decision, and and the over eight and a half. I think those are all safe. I think you'll make money there. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. Uh, the Boxing Bookie comes to for every major fight showing you how to bring down the house. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, subscribe to the Patreon. You get it's just five dollars a month. You get the lock of the week, which I already put in there for you guys. It's it's, it's a Nah, it's a, it's an absolute home run this week. It's a, it's a three play parlay, which you guys can make money on. It's easy. This from showing you how to make money. Also, subscribe to the channel Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. It is February fourteenth, twenty twenty four. I'm not in Texas. I'm in New York today. So from New York to the world, uh, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. Three D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.